G'day Van Fam. This is part two of a video series where we've shared what has honestly been the most challenging thing that we've been through since getting on the road. Last week, we shared the results of a way that we did on our setup after having been on the road for two years. And we were, unfortunately, quite overweight. As soon as we realized that we had an issue, we immediately set about trying to get things right. We realized that our tinny setup was gonna to have to go but that alone wasn't gonna be enough to get us compliant. We were gonna to have to do a significant cull of all of our things in order to try and get our weights right. We took a very hard look at everything that we owned. We basically started at the front of the car and worked our way through to the back of the van. We asked ourselves the question on everything that we owned. Do we need this? Do we use this? Is there a lighter option for this? So we bought a set of scales and we started weighing everything that we owned. We made some hard decisions about what we were gonna keep and what we were gonna get rid of. I created a spreadsheet and tracked the weights of all the things that we decided that we were going to get rid of. And we set about doing a massive cull of all of our things. What we found surprised us. We were shocked at the weight of some of the things that we had accumulated over two years on the road. But we were also shocked at how heavy some things were that we just weren't using in the caravan. Thankfully, I recorded the weight of all the things that we got rid of and I'm going to be able to share that with you guys to hopefully help you find some things that you could get rid of to lighten your loads as well. So first, we'll take you with us as we go and get reweighed and we'll share the results of our reweighing. And after that, we'll take you for a walk around the inside and outside of the car and caravan and we'll point out where we were able to save most of our weights. So let's go and get reweighed. We are off for our reway. Oh dear. Are you excited? I I think we've been able to get out all the weight, but I'm still super nervous. Like, <laughs> I'm sweating so badly. That's not just this um, Alice Springs heat now? No, it's just not the heat. <laughs> just, I hope we've done it. Predictions? Kids, do you think we're going to be over or under? I hope we're under. I hope we're we over. over. We got rid of all my <laughs> Good one, Alice. books, so I really hope that it <laughs> Yeah, I predict we will be easily under in the car, but I think we might be very marginally over in the van because right now we are packed for remote travel. We've actually got nine or ten days worth of food in the van, so that will add up to a lot of weight. I think if we're over by 10 or 20 kilos, I'll still be pretty happy. Yeah. I know that we are very much not normally in this sort of situation with this much food in the car. And a uh, unique situation. Even, even though we might be over by 5, 10, 15 kilos in the van, as soon as we've had our first camp up for the night, we'll be under again. So, all right, let's go and get weighed. Hey mate, Hello. fancy seeing you here. Fancy running into you here. How are you going, guys? <laughs> We're good. Wow. You ready for round two? A bit different. Yeah. Hey. Okay. Yeah. A bit hard at work. <laughs> yeah, we've been we've been culling like crazy. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. Wow. Let's see how we go. Let's hey. See how we go. Let's, let's put her up and see how we go. Let's do it. All right guys, we've been through this weighing process before, so we're not gonna take you through the whole weighing process. We're just gonna run around and get all the new numbers. Cam's gonna do his best to not let me know how we're looking, and then we're gonna have a look at our report at the end of the day, and I'll have a crack and a guess, and I'll see how close I can get to our actual numbers. We are recording, so we've just done our way. How long did that take us? Hardly any time at all, hey? Second time round, when you know the procedure, know the drill, yeah. 
not, not too long at all. Probably 45 only, minutes, something yeah, like that. Yeah, I'd say between 30 and 45 minutes. Yeah. So as I said at the start, I have been given no clues and shown no numbers this time around. No <laughs> facial expressions. So we weighed everything as we were going. We've um, we've taken track of everything that we've been doing. So I'm going to see like how close I could get to uh, <laughs> the actual numbers. So shall we start? Let's go. Let's go. Let's start with the car. Okay. I reckon the car is going to be between 3350 and 3400 towing. Okay. Mel, you want to have a guess or is this all on bread? <laughs> no, 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 no idea. I reckon we're underweight in the car. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My guess. All right, well, as you know, we usually go through in a bit of detail the acronyms and that side of things and what everything means in plain English with our clients and go through all the, the compliance numbers that are specific to you. We've done all that, been through that, been through that before. So let's just get straight to the numbers, hey? All right, drum roll, we ready? Dun, dun, dun. All right, I'm going to skim to the diagram picture page, the one that really matters with all the green and red. You ready? Oh. All right, so here's the caravan first. You want the car? Caravan. Uh, let's do the car. How do I go with that number? Right. I won't read those numbers so I can guess the other ones. All right. So there you go. There's your car. The car, GVM in combination, 3316. We are under <gasps> by 40 kilos more than I expected. So we're under in total by 184 kilos. <laughs> oh my gosh. Jeez. Nice. That means... And I'm not surprised. You guys have made really tough calls. Oh. Really, really <laughs> difficult calls to Know, get yourself under your GVM. You can see it. You can see it in the vehicle. You've stripped Everything. big ticket items out um, to be get you know to get compliant. That's only one number. Remember in our in our overall. All right. Let's but let's that's, do that's the trailer. Start. Let's do the trailer now. The I think. Sorry, the, the caravan or the trailer. <laughs> so we, as I said earlier, we've actually got more than a week and a half worth of food in the caravan. So we are way heavier than I expect we would normally be. We're also full up with gas as well. Yeah. Um, I think the caravan is going to be over and hopefully by nothing more than 20, 30 kilos. Okay. Right now. Mel? I hope it's not over. I want it to be under. <laughs> Alright. Caravan. Wow. We're under our <gasps> aggregate trailer mass, our ATM, by 30 kilos, fully loaded with water. That's amazing. <laughs> well done, guys. <laughs> well done. <laughs> We're over on the Ooh. axles by two, two kilos. kilos. Two that's a, that's kilos. and look, to be honest with you, as that'll we, be gone by tomorrow because well, we're going to eat dinner. <laughs> well, one of the things we touched on when you came here was because you've lost considerable weight from the vehicle. You know how we we checked the hitch height when you rocked up it was 20 mils higher. Yeah. With the new tyres. So and that's pushed it onto the axles. So usually, usually that's right, because usually the higher you go, well, it's, it's a little bit the other way around um, on, a, on a single compared to a double axle caravan. But on a single axle caravan, the higher you go, the lighter the ball weight gets and the more is on the axles. So that's why, I mean, we could look at addressing that by lowering your ball weight, lowering your hitch height. Move some stuff forward. And that, that automatically is going to put more weight onto the ball and less off your okay. axles. Go down here. It's honestly at two kilos. I'm I'm not going to worry yeah. about it. We're never in, we're never in this situation weight wise yeah. generally. So. so you 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 lovely. The other thing, of course, is you got 184 kilos in your car. Wow. So if you had to, you imagine could how many books we could stick in there for Kaylee. That's right. Imagine <laughs> how many boats we could put back on. Oh, wow. no, 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 no. Ah, so well done, guys. So that's amazing. Our, our yep. tow ball mass is not fantastic. We're at eight percent. We got. 220 kilos of tow ball mass giving us 8% tow ball mass. You want to be between 9 and 11 yeah. ideally, right? And again, a lot of that's got to do with the fact that we're higher, yeah. sitting higher on the, on the hitch. I think if we were to have a drop down and lower 30, 35, 40 mil, something like that, you'll find your tow ball is going to get heavier. We'll get probably very close to the right range. Your axles um, will lighten a touch okay. and you'll get under on that one as well simply by just adjusting your hitch height. So if both these numbers are right, I know for a fact our um, combination is going to be right. I expected us to be about 68.50, uh, mm -hmm. but now I've seen the numbers, I think we're probably going to be more like 57.80, 50, 57.50, 58. 58.18 we are, so that is a massive 182. 182 kilos on our GCM. GCM. So effectively you've got close to 180 kilos you can put in the car on top of the car. <laughs> to what you've currently got. So, you I got guess, some options? I guess there might be some kind of boat coming back to Sveto's <laughs> tripping. <laughs> no, 
Let's just have a look before we run away. There's one more number we need to have a look at, guys. The axle way. The axle. So let's just have a look at that. All right, and see where we are. Okay. So here we go again. I'll skim straight down. And of course, the top one is you're unhitched without the caravan, and we're under there, even with your bull bar and whatnot on the front. And, and it usually isn't because you've stripped so much weight out of the back of the car. So that pivot effect, yeah, that pivot effect. But we're still good. This is 23 kilos under on the front axle without the caravan hitched. This is unhitched. This is just the caravan. Yeah. So here we are hitched. 115 and 69 under on your rear. So you were worried you're over. So the point is you're not over. And to get our rear axles right as well. That's so exciting. And we've got enough wiggle room for putting some stuff on. And again, you know, we've spoken before, if it was me, I'd look at getting something, another slight riff rack over here, over where the, um, the cabin is, where your cabin is, so you can bring a little bit of weight forward. Yeah. All right, I'll just talk to the vlog real quick. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> well, I can't believe we made it. <laughs> I can't believe how much stuff we got rid of. And, and we've made it by <laughs> what is now, I would say, a comfortable margin. Yeah. So uh, when we get a chance, when we pull up next, we will take you guys for a run through the whole caravan, the whole car. We'll show you everything that we've done to get here and uh, hopefully give you some advice and some information on how you can get your weights right too. Well guys, we're back in the van. As you can see that we are now within our weights, which is fantastic. But I kind of want to take you around the van to show you how much we had to get rid of. Like, it's just insane. When you get a scale and you start weighing everything, like we just had to be really, really, really tough. And I just want to talk you through like some of the sacrifices we've had to make. Things were now, we would say to each other, oh, I wish we had that still. <laughs> So we're just kind of going to do do a bit of that. So first thing I want to talk about is the kids' bunks. So Kaylee's bunk alone had 13 kilos of books. Oh, by the way, this is the spreadsheet with some weights value. So you can see, well, I don't know where Kaylee's books are, somewhere in there. Yeah. So Kaylee- but 13 Kaylee, kilos of Kaylee's books, hey? So now we have a strict, she's only allowed to keep three books in her bunk. The rest have to live in the car and it's strict in and out policy. So anytime we see a book swap, great, they're gone because otherwise, I don't even know where she was hiding them to be honest. I think they were under the mattress. Owen had three kilos of rubbish and junk and stuff that was broken in there. I don't know why I like to keep it. It's just part of who he is. Um, so that was like a huge amount of stuff. Also, we did, get rid of under here we had the air fryer the coffee machine the toaster all gone now we have nothing now we have nothing like we store some wraps in there we store wrap a lot of wraps in there this drawer would always get stuck and there's like hardly anything in there now and because of that our clicker was broken so yeah i can talk to this we have only the utensils we use every day and no other utensils yeah. so there's been a few occasions where i'm like i wish i had that but and only like four forks Four knives, four spoons, just enough for everything. We're having to like, we've got space everywhere, like space, so I'm like when we hit corrugations or bumps, things bounce around, like even we've got one cup each now. Like that's how ruthless we've had to be. And I had to get rid of my dish drainer. I've got one of these now, which I'm not super in love with because I have to wipe up, wipe up the dishes straight away, but <laughs> it's one of those, those things. I had uh, like five kilos in my cupboard, just of random souvenirs that we she got had, the way. She had two spare journals that she does. Show your journal. So Mel does a journal everywhere that we visit with photos. You can show the pictures of it. People might be interested. So, so I've just made this up myself. And this I is the journal. Where we are, how much it costs, and I put like what we did and put photos. But she had two of those spare. Yeah. So there's backups. Many pages of that, right? Yeah. So, they got posted. Yeah, they went back to my parents' house. So my parents got a really big box of stuff. So in this cupboard alone, Mel found five kilos of things she didn't need. Yeah, so it's like, it's empty now. <laughs> yeah, we pretty well keep things only half full these days. And we were sniping at each other because I had 27 dresses and now I don't. <laughs> so they got- You were just crying at me that you had to get rid of dresses. I gave up a goddamn boat. <laughs> I think you can sacrifice a couple of dresses. So my dresses live in here and it's, 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 there's, they've just gone back to mum and then I'm going to swap them out later in the year. 
Um, so there's been quite a lot of sacrificing. We've had, we've gone through all the kids' school stuff as well. There was probably 10 kilos of school stuff. We just emailed the school and said, if we're not using it, can we send it back? And they were like, yep. So yeah. that was like, now I've only got like a small portion. I can speak to that again, seeing as I do the kids' schooling, but um, we just improvise. Yeah. So you, you don't need to have the paddle pop sticks. You can just go and find a couple of sticks when you need that activity. So we sent like, yeah, yeah more than three quarters worth of the school kids supplies have back. One book each when this is this is what we're speaking of it's almost full we have to buy one we're like that's the lengths we're going to we're only having one we're not having huge amounts of stock backups when we go away for these long trips we have a bag in the back of the car which also our extra food we just don't don't have the space the other thing too, well we've like, got the space we don't have the weight we, we now have, have the, the space yeah. that's the thing that we wanted to highlight is we have the majority of our cupboards only half full these days yeah which is amazing i really do love it but anytime you're somewhere and you're like oh that's really cool like i think we even went to the lengths we weighed all of these because we were going to get <laughs> rid of them all yeah we talked about losing the little decorations that mel's been collecting and doing what do they weigh two kilos between all of them you got those ones there That's these ones the, here what are these the what are these called by the way mel they're like yugi yugi uh, they're from a company in New Zealand. They're made out of recycled paper. And they're just, anytime we see that particular animal, we buy it and put it together. Yeah, that's the deal. They don't get put together until we see that animal in the wild. It's a really fun thing to do while you're traveling. Yeah. But we considered getting rid of it. We did. That's how brutal we were talking about. So like we went through like all our electrics as well. We probably had like 20 extra cables, like just hanging around that we had duplicates of. So like we've only got one cable of everything now. So if we lose it, we're kind of screwed. So basically what we're saying is we went through literally every drawer every drawer every cupboard every pile of things yeah and we figured out what we could do without there were spaces down here that we had like tons of stuff and we had tupperware that just wasn't getting used so now all we have is this like that's our tupperware which we've used it for jelly <laughs> i'm not sure i was even feeling it again <laughs> so we were we were pretty brutal every like it was really hot we was really sad we were really upset uh, it was brutal because every time you went through a drawer it was like oh how how brutal can we be i gotta say i like that our cup drawer is so spacious now because i can fit things in and close the drawer yeah so owen had a coffee cup now why did owen have a coffee cup he didn't need it so that disappeared yeah. This is these are the questions that we asked ourselves. Yeah, like okay, what do we need like four wooden spoons? No, we'll just have to wash one up. Do we need two measuring cups? No. Like there's hardly anything in here. We had two Do we need a can opener? Actually came in handy the other day. <laughs> we had two kitchen knives, now we only have one. Yeah. So everything just went and even like we went through everything and now it's a standard policy. Before we do a shop, we go through the cupboards, see what hasn't been used. We don't buy doubles, don't buy triples, don't buy it because it's on special. Yeah, there were cans in the cupboard of things that were never going to get used, <laughs> like a can of peaches that someone bought. We don't eat canned peaches, so yeah, it just I don't sat even there for, <laughs> for six months. So go through your pantries, find the things that you're not using, and you can get rid of some yeah, things. Yeah, you've got to make sure that you're constantly going through things i'm always getting the kids to clean their bunks if there's anything they don't want anymore we donate it if it's anything super special they want to keep it gets posted back to my mum. thanks mum. <laughs> all right so that's the inside of the caravan we'll now go for a walk around all of the outside of the caravan and show you what we got rid of and uh talk there's about some of the weights extremely weight. surprising which surprised me yeah. when we do the outside and i was just shocked at how heavy this was yeah it's a good one what was it like eight kilos yeah we'll show you when we get there as promised guys we're going to show you the outside of what we did and what we got rid of and i think you'll find it's pretty shocking Ready? Surprise! There's no boat up there. <laughs> now, you already knew about that, so obviously the tinny is gone from the equation. It's really nice to have our solder panels exposed all the time, so we, we don't mind that. I miss the tinny though, that's for sure. <laughs> but we can do a bit of a reveal of the canopy and what this is now looking like, because we didn't just stop with the tinny. This whole section is now empty. You can see we still have a motor in there, which means there might be something coming that uses a motor. We'll show you that next week, hopefully. <laughs> but we had um, an esky in here, and that esky, well, not an esky actually, it was a fridge, uh, like a 33 litre spare fridge. So 
We sold that. That one was probably 11 kilos, I think, from memory. What I'll do with all these weights is I'll actually put the numbers up on the screen because uh, I can't remember everything. So we got rid of an esky. We had another bag here that was full of camping equipment. We culled the majority of that and got rid of a bunch of weight there. There was probably about 10 kilos in that as well. That went to, some, to, to Vinnie's or donating or something. That's right. And then we moved everything that was left forward of the axles up here in the corner. So we're trying to position as much weight forward as we can. Uh, we went to the extent actually with the tools, for example, we went through the tools. I've got deep dish sockets and I had shallow sockets. So I got rid of all the shallow sockets because there's nothing a deep socket's not going to do that a shallow socket can do. So. And how many times have we said, oh, we wish we had that tool, but. <laughs> we got rid of, we had a ton of screws and bolts and nuts and pieces like that. We threw out all of those as well, and that's already come back to bite us. There's been a couple of times where I'm like, I wish I needed it. But basically we said to ourselves, look, if we need something, we'll go to the shops and we'll buy it. So I've needed some metal screws again, so I had to go back and buy these, which is annoying because I threw some of them out. But um, yeah, that's what we did. So as you can see now, this canopy is three quarters empty, or at least half empty, and that's pretty much what you need to be thinking if you're going to get your rear axle weights. You can't just be loading your canopy full of stuff. But we keep coming around. We did some other things as well. Excuse how messy the car is because we've been out camping and living at the moment. So this is what we look like normally. But one of the things that I did was we have this big storage area in behind the seat. So we went and moved a bunch of heavy things. So this is the lock for the caravan. That's about four kilos. So if we stick that behind there, that helps us. This is a bottle jack. So that's very heavy. That's probably about 10, 15 kilos in that. Our recovery gear is also now stored in here. So we've just done everything we can to try and bring some of this weight forward. And that's probably a trick that you guys can use as well. We'll keep walking around now. Didn't touch anything on the front of the car. But on this side of the canopy, we used to have a nice big pantry. And what we found with that pantry was there was some flour and some salt in there. And that was, there was a ton of things in there that we were never using, but the only things that we used was the flour and the salt. So we decided we could go without that. And that pantry on its own was 17 kilos. And the crap that we just had sitting in there and we weren't using was, if I double check our spreadsheet here, 11.7 kilos of pantry contents and seriously the only things that we were using in there regularly was a tub of flour and some salt <laughs> so it does pay to like make note and go through your stuff all the time which we're always doing especially with the kids now anyway so we used to keep in our drawer a second set of cutlery plates knives spoons forks so what we've done is we've moved the things that we had in the pantry into this drawer we discarded our second set of cutlery if we're ever going to go camping out of the car which to be honest you almost never do because why would you when this is what you live at the majority of the time we thought we'd go camping all the time and leave the van behind you take your van to places like this you don't need to go camping at least that's what we found anyway so there's a huge gap here now it's just i uh, got a pool noodle a bag like there's just the canopy is really empty and I mean, I quite like it. We didn't get rid of the soda stream because we love that. <laughs> well, the soda stream is technically a weight saver. <laughs> a couple of things I'll talk about around here in the hitch area. We considered up here, I'm up here, darling. I'm <laughs> not down here, I'm up here. <laughs> we considered a weight distribution hitch. What a weight dist distribution hitch does is it transfers a lot of the weight from the rear axle and onto the front axle but it also transfers some of the weight onto the axle of the van as well. We opted against it because we were already touch and go with getting the van weights right and throwing some more weight onto the axle of the van would have been an issue. Plus the hitch itself weighs about 20 kilos which comes onto the van so for us it wasn't the right solution. On top of that a weight distribution hitch will stop you from being able to go off-road as well so for those reasons we chose not to try and go down that path. As you've seen, we managed to get our weights there the way that we've done it. So um, it was the right call to not go that way. Another thing that we also considered doing was a rear diff upgrade. And what that will do is it will increase your axle weights 
for uh, your rear axle by doing a diff upgrade. That was about five grand. Uh, it was just money that we didn't really have to spend, but um, I considered the option and I looked up the option, so I thought I'd mention it for you guys so that you know that that is an additional option that you can use. All right. The other thing we did was we got a better jockey wheel, I guess you call it. Yeah, well this was, I'm trying, I'm trying to focus on the big things, but we did, we changed jockey wheel to one of those drill ones, which is amazing. And there was a 800 gram saving in weight. So <laughs> we made lots of white savings. Also going around, there's, um, there is a company out there called, um, Comgas. Uh, Comp Gas? Comp Gas? Comp Gas. <laughs> Comp Gas. Uh, and they offer a, um, a See. composite gas bottle which are supposed to save you about 10 kilos. They don't quite hold the eight kilos that these gas bottles hold. I think they're like 6.7 kilos or something like that. We've actually got a couple of those ordered on and on the way. So I'm really excited to bring those in. So that's gonna drop our weights by another 10 odd kilos, plus the kilo or so less of gas that you're carrying. So about 12 kilos all up. Um, our friends Mark from Mark and Clem from Our Wheel Adventure have actually done a video on these gas bottles and they've got a discount code as well. So if that's something that you're interested in, I'll chuck a link up here. You can go and check out their video and use their discount code, save you a little bit of money. They're very expensive, but 10 kilos just like that, you know, it's pretty good. All now, right. the most surprising thing about this box is if you go back to our tiny little tour, it was full and disgusting. And if you look at it now, there's nothing in here. But the most surprising thing was... There was a drawer or a slide in here. You know how much it weighed? 11.7 kilos. Yeah. 11.7 kilos for us to be able to slide some things out. Or if we want to get to the things in the back of this box, we can just reach in and get the... <laughs> That's 11.7 kilos, guys. That's like if the most you go, shocking thing. If you go and you have a close look at all the things on your van, you're probably going to find that there are some things that you don't really need. If we ever do a rebuild on a van and get a new van built for us again, I can assure you we're going to put a lot more thought into what they put onto the van and not just get what they give you and without thinking about it. But that's what you do when you first buy a van. You don't really know what you want. All right, we'll have a look through our tunnel boots as well. It's the last thing to talk about on the outside. You come down low, Mel, you can see that's only half full. And this is the more full tunnel boot. This is the larger tunnel boot of the two. Because our tunnel boot, or because our ball weight's quite late, we're trying to, sorry, let me try and speak English. Because our ball weight is quite light, we're trying to move more weight forward. So we have a little bit more in this one. But the second tunnel boot, if you come around here, that's less than half full. It's crazy. So... That's the realities, you need to be packing light. So even though a caravan has so much space, because your payload is quite light, uh, you really do need to be having half full cupboards if you're gonna get there. Actually, something that Cam wanted me to talk about in this video as well and spell out for you guys is, um, you need to measure your payload or think of your payload like this. You've got your payload that it says in your van, which is your, uh, your tear mass minus your aggregate trailer mass. But then you need to remember that you're gonna be putting in 200 or 300 kilos of water, depending on your water storage. You're gonna be putting 16 kilos of gas onto that. So when you go to the shops and you're looking to buy a caravan, it says it's got a 650 kilo payload. It's actually going to be, after you put in your water and put on your gas, you're probably gonna only have about a 200, sorry. You have a 650 kilo payload, you'll probably be left with about a 400 kilo payload after you put water and gas on. So just something to keep in mind when you're thinking about how much stuff are we gonna be putting into our van. Mm. All right, I think we're gonna be wrapping up the vlog here. Not quite. The other Except thing we- wants to say something. Well, there's no trailer on the there's back. There's no That's trailer right. on the back either. It's so spacious back here. It's so here. spacious <laughs> back here. Looks weird. It look, does look weird. Looks the empty. other thing too, the kids tunnel boot, it was full with all their stuff. And now there's a huge gap. So when we go off road, we kind of have to rearrange everything. So it's kind of not bouncing around, which is weird. <laughs> um, but we sent back, we sent back stuff from inside for, to their school. We sent back more stuff out of here to their school. And we're constantly like rotating their toys. So go to an op shop, find something, because they're always going through phases and whatever else. So the best thing we can suggest is just keep going through your stuff, whatever you're not using. In and out. Yeah. In and don't out. Just, don't just let the stuff sit 
Don't just let the stuff sit in the van. You just get rid of it. Yeah. It's like being a minimalist. Living in a caravan, you do need to become minimalist. Yeah, you do. All right, we're going to wrap it up here. We're going to wrap it up here. I hope this has been very helpful. It was very eye-opening for us. And if we ever do a van build again, we're definitely doing it with a much clearer eyes. <laughs> yeah, and a lot more thought about yeah. the weight of things and what's going into it. If you, you get the chance, <laughs> if you get the chance, see where you can cut on weight. So if there are things that you don't need, just don't get them on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for watching. Don't see forget you next to week. like, subscribe, and we'll see you for our next adventure with who knows what. <laughs> Bye. Bye.